Hello everyone and welcome to the GIZ webinar. Support for the compilation of GHG inventories and identification of mitigation options in the waste sector. My name is Katarina Tapo. I am a member of the project Information Matters, one of the two GIZ projects hosting this webinar. Before we start with a proper introduction and outlining the agenda of the webinar, I would like to make some technical announcements so that you know how to communicate and interact during the webinar. As already indicated in the invitation, this webinar is being recorded and will be published on the YouTube channel of the Information Matters project. The names of the attendees and the chat history will not be seen on the recording. On the left margin, you see the control panel with your name under attendees. The moderator has muted the microphones of all participants, which means that you cannot turn on your microphone by yourself. If you want to communicate with us, please use the chat box in the lower left corner. Type in your message and questions, select the recipients in the drop-down menu and click send. We encourage you to send us questions to the speakers already during the webinar, which we can discuss later on during the questions and answers session. Please address your questions either to all or all, all presenters in the drop-down menu. In order not to lose time, we kindly ask you to pose your questions already ahead of the Q&A session. If you wish, you are also very welcome to tell us via the chat box in which country you are located and for which institution you are working. Again, the chat history will not be seen on the recording later on. Furthermore, we recommend you maximize the app window by clicking the marked icon in the upper right corner to properly see the presentation. When moving the mouse cursor over the lower right corner, icons appear that allow you to adjust how you view the presentation or to zoom in and out, for instance. If you encounter technical difficulties, you can also address our colleague Sibylle directly via the chat box. Her name is Tushta in the drop-down menu. I will now present you the agenda of today's webinar. Now, after the technical announcement, my colleague Johannes Paul will give you an introduction to the webinar, followed by a short presentation of the two GIZ projects hosting this webinar. Afterwards, our colleagues Reka Zos, Flavio Pop, and Brian McCarthy from the Resources and Waste Advisory Group will give you an overview of the training on the compilation of GHG inventories and identification of mitigation options in the waste sector and report from their experiences in conducting the training in Ghana and Colombia earlier this year. Afterwards, during the Q&A session, we will discuss together with all speakers the questions and comments that you, the participants, have sent us so far via the chat box. Now, I would like to hand over to Johannes Paul for the introduction to the webinar. Yeah, a pleasant good day to all of you. My name is Johannes Paul. I work as GIZ advisor in the headquarters GIZ Ashbourne in Germany. And I thank you very much for enrolling in our webinar training on the compilation of greenhouse gas inventories and identification of mitigation options in the waste sector. On the first slide, you see uh, some logos which may help us to understand how the project came alive. We have two GIZ projects who joined forces. Information Matters is conducted on behalf of the Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature Conversation, and Nuclear Safety, in short, BMU, and the second GSZ project involved is a sector project, Sustainable Waste Management and Circular Economy, which is conducted on behalf of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, in short, BMZ. You see uh, next uh, to the right uh, another logo, RWA. This is the Resources and Waste Advisory Group, the expert consultants we involved to prepare the training. So you may ask, why did we prepare this training? What are the objectives? What do we want to share today? Well, with the Paris Agreement from 2015, the international community agreed once more to proceed jointly to combat climate change by reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the various sectors. However, the Paris Agreement now proposes relevant changes 
which concern also our work in developing countries, uh, especially for developing countries, the CDM mechanism, the clean development mechanism will phase out. That was a voluntary mechanism which allowed developing countries to participate in uh, the climate and emission trading. And this will be changed by all countries who signed the Paris Agreement to the so-called NDC process, the National Determined Contributions. Um, according to Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, every country who signed now has to provide, to plan and to submit an NDC plan to the international community. So we from the projects, Information Matters and from the sector projects, although we work in our daily work with different stakeholders, we have very similar objectives um, which, gain, which aim towards uh, closing knowledge gaps in the waste sector and to enable relevant stakeholders to plan and implement climate action. Information Matters works more on the national level, involved in more sectors, we from the sector project focus on the waste sector. Now the NDC process uh, needs to link uh, all international intervention levels in every country from the national to the sub-national and to the local, to the implementation level. And when we discussed that, we realized that when we join forces, it may be very beneficial for our development process to support that key stakeholders already participate in a joint uh, capacity building measure. And for that, we um, steered our development support. We decided uh, to jointly develop a training concept in a stepwise approach together with our expert from the Resources and Waste Advisory Group. In the first step, we checked materials, methods, and tools, and we developed a concept what we thought would be beneficial. And then we tested this concept in two countries, in Ghana and Colombia. And from the insights, from the experiences, from the feedbacks, from the lessons learned, we fine-tuned our training concept, which is now available and ready to be used in other countries to support, for example, their NDC O2 action efforts. Later on, we get a brief from our involved uh, experts. And for now, I would like to hand uh, back to my colleague, Katarina Tapo, to brief us on the Information Matters Project. Thank you very much, Johannes. In the context of the Information Matters Project, the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, GIZ, provides capacity building and technical support to partner countries on behalf of the German Federal Ministry for the Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety under its International Climate Initiative. During the first and second project phases between 2013 and 2018, the project supported seven selected partner countries that you can see on the world map in the upper right corner. During its current third phase, from 2018 until early 2019, further countries are supported through its flexible ad hoc facility. The Information Matters project aims at strengthening the partner countries' in-country capacities for enhanced reporting under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. The project has a special focus on the preparation of biennial update reports and the development and implementation of sustainable systems for measurement, reporting and verification, MRV. A key feature of the Information Matters project is the country-tailored approach. In consultation with the partners, specific needs and priorities for national MRV systems and preparation of BURs and greenhouse gas inventories are identified, prioritized and addressed through tailored in-country capacity building workshops and trainings. Additionally, peer-to-peer -peer exchanges have been organized and based on the experiences and lessons learned since 2013, different knowledge products, tools and guidance materials have been developed. On this site, you can take a look and can see some of the publications which you can download for free on our project website. And webinars can also be watched on the project's YouTube channel.
You can request a training on the compilation of GHG inventories and identification of mitigation options in the waste sector via the so-called ad hoc facility of our Information Matters project. Within the scope of the ad hoc facility, we provide targeted capacity building and technical support to a number of additional countries with a focus on African countries, least developed countries, and small island development states. For more information on how to apply for the training or other support under the ad hoc facility, please visit the project's webpage or contact the project manager, Klaus Wenzel. Thank you very much, and now I would like to hand over again to my colleague, Johannes. Yeah, thank you, Katarina. I would like to brief you on the second project involved, the sector project, Sustainable Waste Management and Circular Economy. We are a team of five advisors stationed in uh, Eschborn in Germany. The project is led by Ms. Ellen Concilius. Um, some pictures to start with, you see on the right side, pet bottles in a recovery process here by the informal sector. And on the left side, a photo which shows how pet bottles are bailed and uh, processed in order to bring it back uh, as a secondary raw material to industrial use. So these two uh, photos somehow show what we can do to involve the waste sectors. And in the middle uh, photo, you see what happens if you are unable to organize this process. You see uncontrolled waste disposal with negative con consequences of pollution, which may be marine pollution, but could also be a harmful greenhouse gas emission just to bring you in the context of our project. The key processes we are involved are mainly to support BMZ in its positioning and in the making of concepts which address uh, relevant issues in solid waste management and circular economy. To give you an example, we were involved this year to uh, support the making of action program in circular economy. We have an ongoing process to help the formalization of a multi-stakeholder uh, waste alliance. We respond to international processes like G7 or G20 or United Nations Environmental Assembly, same with EU, um, policy making and uh, responding to these development processes. You see three listed uh, aspects, waste management and climate mitigation, I highlighted it. This is our topic today. But increasingly, we are also uh, requested to respond on the global arising issue of marine litter or the lack of uh, e-waste management. Uh, these processes have all a link to uh, various sustainable development goals. I highlight a few where we are much um, concerned with, like number 13 climate action or 11 um, sustainable cities and um, communities, 12 responsible consumption and production or number 14 life below water, which links very much to marine litter. The main objective of all of our activities are geared that uh, concepts and innovations for circular economy and sustainable waste management can be applied on the national and international level in policy making, and that we provide tools to support development cooperation in our partner countries. That ends my short introduction, and we are now on the stage to hand over to our experts from the Resources and Waste Advisory Group to give us uh, a brief on our training concept. So I welcome Rika Sous, Brian McCarty, and Flavio Pop. Please, the word is yours. Hello, everybody. This is Reka Sous. I'm talking from Cluj-Napoca, Romania. And I will give the uh, first part of this presentation, followed by my colleagues Brian and then Flavio. Um, so a little bit about this training concept. Um, we will talk about the objectives, the challenges that the training addresses, who the target audience is, what the content of the manual is. Um, an important part of our work was to think of good exercises to make the training interactive. So we will talk about those. And then briefly, the experience from Ghana and Colombia. Um, we often put this slide up about uh, if you can't measure something, you can't manage it or you can't improve it. The, the quote itself is a bit longer, but uh, that's, the, that's the main idea. It's often difficult for people to understand why uh, you would try to measure 
um, GHG impact, um, especially when you go to the to the countries and talk to practitioners in the field who ma mainly handle waste, and they waste is a very visible um, object, and so we have to make this link with uh, connected it connecting it to GHG accounting, which um, greenhouse gases also need to be measured in order to be managed. Um, then uh, we also talk a lot about some of the common challenges faced by the countries. The Good Practice Guide of the Information Matters um, project gives a lot of information on this uh, to highlight some of the issues that we uh, often talk about. Um, for example, the quantities uh, and the composition of waste is often a challenge for, for the countries. Um, quantities are often estimated. Estimations are, uh, methods of estimations are varying from country to country. Uh, composition is often measured only at one point of the process flow, um, even though uh, it's very different, for example, at generation as compared to, let's say, a sorting station uh, or the disposal site. Then there are issues of aggregation. How do you aggregate and disaggregate? Um, often, uh, whatever the informal sector does is not measured or is not well known about, um, but it has a, often an important uh, contribution to greenhouse gas emissions because, for example, open burning is a, a big contributor. Uh, there are issues about institutional framework, human resources, financial resources, um, missing data, and from here we also talk about the uncertainties. Uh, is an important issue with uh, greenhouse gas uh, accounting because um, looking at greenhouse gases from a global point of view, it's important to put the emissions in the right pocket. For example, with a biogas plant, you would have emissions from the process, uh, but you would also have emis emission reductions in the energy sector, which are then counted there. Um, so uh, we are uh, looking at uh, three main topics with this training. Uh, one is the data collection at the field level and also the management of data, how the data flows. Then we talk about uh, UNFCCC reporting requirements and what the national inventories are. And then uh, the third module is how do we connect this to real life projects which will lead to emission reduction and mitigation. Uh, the target audience uh, is different from country to country, but it often includes uh, authorities responsible for inventory compiling, also the managers, uh, local authorities uh, who deal with uh, waste and wastewater um, projects on the field. There's also the intermediary level of data providers and managers and aggregators, depending on how the institutional setting is for data collection and management. And then there are other groups, so maybe consultants, uh, local experts, or um, other organizations involved in some way in this issue. Um, the content of the training materials, training manual, is distributed in five modules, but it is basically following these three major issues that we talked about. Um, so I'm not going to spend much time on this, but it's uh, about policy and institutional framework, greenhouse gas inventory, waste data management. Then we go in depth for the calculation methods, which are around uh, in the greenhouse gas inventory uh, methodologies. And we, and we have a module on mitigation actions. Uh, the first uh, part of this is, um, is about the policy and institutional framework. Johannes did give us already a small introduction on this. Uh, the training here uh, focuses a lot on, on just introducing this international process that is going on. We talk about abbreviations uh, and how to understand all this um, quite difficult to access language of the UNFCCC and make sense of it. In uh, the methodology itself, we cover four areas. 
uh, in the waste sector, the solid waste disposal, the biological treatment, the incineration and open burning, and then the wastewater treatment and discharge. We try to focus equally on all of these, although uh, solid waste disposal is often a focus because that's also where most of the emissions are. Uh, then we go into um, details on the GHG inventories, for example, um, we go into the different countries, as I said, the best practice guide, which is uh, from the information matters, and you will be able to ad uh, access that online, um, has been at the basis of this training. Uh, we talk a, b a lot about the double counting. We focus on, on data which is in the key categories. Key categories are those data which are most crucial for the given country to um, estimate the GHG emissions. And um, this is just a slide which we got from the, the fact sheet from the NDC brief, which is also a product of the GIZ, but this is from the sectors program. And this is uh, uh, what we use to present the link between uh, mitigation actions and uh, possibilities to mitigate in the different um, elements of the circular economy and where the emissions occur. So you will see here uh, highlighted uh, everything from production to waste management to uh, retrieving the secondary resources. And in the larger bubble here, also the different, um, the different um, technologies that are covered in the IPCC methodology. I would like to draw your attention that uh, recycling and recovery and co-processing are not in the waste sector as such, but they are accounted in other sectors of the inventories. And I would like to hand over now to my colleague Brian. Hello, everybody. So, yeah, thanks, Rika. So, um, in preparing this training and, and delivering this training, we recognize that um, everywhere the, the mitigation and the reporting mechanisms are not the same. Um, everywhere has different appropriate and applicable and affordable means of reporting and mitigation measures. So we very much recognize the difficulties and uh, differences in collecting data, uh, waste sector data in each individual country, uh, both at a national level and then going down to the local level and that affects the way that the reporting is done and also um, affects our um, planning in mitigation measures. So module three of our training goes into how do we collect that data and um, we know that um, um, Johannes presented earlier the other activities that are going on with the GIZ, uh, reducing marine litter, e-waste, uh, the sustainable development goals, and also um, assisting in developing national solid waste management plans. And they all have very similar but varying reporting needs. So we focus on what data can we expect to get out and how do we streamline the collection of the data at the grassroots practitioner level because often we find that practitioners are overwhelmed, the reporting mechanisms and, and um, functions are fragmented and the information is often being collected or known at the grassroots level at the operator's level, but not known at the national reporting level. So we try and identify with you the way that we can streamline this data reporting mechanisms. So we go through the data that's needed, both for the wastewater sector and for the solid waste sector um, for the GHG inventory process. So how is the data being collected? We give examples from uh, good practice, and from other um, lesser... Brian, uh, Brian sorry, yeah. uh, do, do you want to flip the page? Do, um, shall I flip the page for you? Uh, it's good, I'm good. I'm still here on this slide. We're still on module three, so we go into the data disaggregation, um, what uh, the, the, the different information that's uh, available according to um, low-income groups, high-income groups, and how we can 
disaggregate that to make the uh, information gathered more accurate. And then we relate that to the waste management process flows um, and, and how that's flowing through the system and how we can verify whether the information is accurate um, going from the generation to the disposal where a lot of the GHG emissions are coming from. Then we look at the categories of solid waste disposal sites. Uh, depending on what type of waste disposal, landfill or dump site, whether it's deep or shallow, will impact the GHG emissions from that site. So how do we categorize and identify what sites you have? And then we go over a, a, an introduction of how you can actually do a waste characterization study um, and then benchmark that against um, countries or communities of similar waste um, or economic development to verify your result to see if it's in the right order. So the, this slide shows uh, we, we try and introduce a lot of our concepts through uh, pictorial representation, very um, less text and more visualization. So here is another pictorial representation of the GHG emissions from the different sources, uh, the different um, processes within the waste service and um, value chain. So module four then goes into the in-depth GHG calculation methods. So using the IPCC um, Excel tools, we use the examples we developed in module three to pull them through and then go into a practical example using real life data from your country if we have it, or using example data and showing what, how the um, results change depending on the accuracy of the information and data that you gather. And then module five, the mitigation actions in the waste sector. So how do we then take that information and say we have a lot of emissions coming from this specific source. So how can we mitigate, uh, reduce those emissions, comparing the technologies that are available ensuring that they are applicable and affordable to the context of the country in which we're developing, delivering the training, um, look at the methods that are appropriate and available for estimating the GHG emissions at the specific points that we're looking at um, and also the mitigation measures uh, options that we are assessing and then most importantly the financing options available for those mitigation measures because uh, unless they are affordable, then they won't be realistic and implementable. So maybe we have to change the focus to a more affordable mitigation measure. So this slide is just an example of the waste streams that we are interested in. So not just municipal solid waste and not just general um, municipal uh, wastewater. We're looking at the industrial waste as well uh, uh, and other uh, sources. And then following that through the waste service chain um, to the output and how that impacts the mitigation, the GHG emissions, and um, whether we can find a, a sink or a, a replacement of uh, fossil fuels or um, mitigate it through some other action. And those are the examples we will look at. So very much hands on practical based training uh, using a lot of exercises throughout. Um, to go through the category analysis of the double counting, often we will see that um, uh, the, the, in the IPCC guidelines, maybe the, the uh, emissions are counted under the, um, the, uh, um, uh, the energy sector um, where, or the agricultural sector instead of the waste. So we, how do we adjust for that? Waste characterization, so a very, an exercise on going through how do we do waste characterization, um, identifying the solid waste disposal sites and the type, quality assurance, quality control, and the impact assessment of the technical scenarios that you can develop and how you can do that. And, and also the institutional arrangements for that data flow, which is very important because as I said earlier, we often find the information is available um, often too much information, big data, little time to process it. So how can we streamline that? And we go into that. 
So a couple, uh, an example of the exercises, um, the exercise three, the classification of solid waste disposal sites. This can be quite confusing because the IPCC guidelines talk about a managed anaerobic disposal, managed semi-aerobic, unmanaged deep, unmanaged shallow, and all have different GHG uh, emission potentials. So we go through these and uh, try and assist through um, some examples. Uh, here's three of the examples, short videos of different dump sites, landfills um, around the world, and get you to uh, assess um, what classification within the IPC guidelines these are to assist you when you go into the reality on, on the field in your select country, and we'll assist you with that. And so handing over to Flavio, um, who will present a couple of pilot cases, studies that we've done in Ghana and Colombia, where we've already delivered the training. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, this is Flavio speaking. Um, uh, together with uh, Reka and Brian, I am part of the team uh, delivering trainings on the compilation of GHG inventories. Uh, within a first phase of this project, we have conducted two uh, pilot trainings in Ghana and Colombia, uh, which helped us to uh, develop a first draft of a uh, generic training material uh, addressing the topics that were already introduced. And I'm now going to briefly introduce you um, our experiences with the two uh, trainings. Uh, in Ghana, the training aimed to uh, improve Ghana's um, climate data management system uh, to enhance uh, data collection and consequently improve the quality of uh, reporting. Uh, the main topics um, within the training agenda uh, established together with the national partner, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency in Ghana, the EPA, uh, were um, introduction to the UNFCCC uh, negotiation uh, processes, agreements, and the reporting uh, requirements, um, introduction to the 2006 IPCC guidelines, uh, waste data collection and uh, management, uh, in-depth insight into using the Excel tools uh, as per the IPCC guidelines, um, defining and selecting mitigation actions and comparing mitigation scenarios, uh, waste characterization methods and uh, institutional framework for uh, inventory building and data flows. Uh, the audience in Ghana was uh, represented by field practitioners from municipalities from around the country and representatives of the EPA. Um, this part of the participants uh, was highly knowledgeable uh, on the waste management issues, uh, while another part uh, was uh, very much knowledgeable on the GHG uh, inventory uh, processes. Uh, the EPA in Ghana is uh, responsible for reporting national greenhouse gas emissions. Um, within this process, the EPA collaborates with uh, municipal officials and other stakeholders to undertake uh, various activities uh, specific to um, an inventory uh, process, uh, so, such as uh, activity data management, uh, compilation of the sectoral emissions, uh, quality control and assurance, uh, preparation and submission of the inventory to the UNFCCC uh, through the, uh, through the uh, responsible ministry in the country. Uh, in terms of results, uh, the training in Ghana uh, created a platform for discussion uh, with different institutions uh, on how to strengthen the data collection and management system uh, in order to improve the quality of data. Um, the main outcome uh, was to facilitate communication with the authorities uh, responsible for the GHG inventory and in the same time to make the trainees uh, mostly consisting in uh, munici uh, municipal uh, representatives, so waste practitioners, 
to make them aware of the data requirements uh, for a national inventory. Uh, there were many specific topics that emerged during the uh, training session and which allowed the participants to gain knowledge and uh, better understanding of the waste management and greenhouse uh, gas emissions. Uh, just some examples here. Um, so um, there were discussions about uh, the UNFCCC processes, uh, the rationale of the inventories, um, how these inventories are shaping uh, policy for mitigation actions, um, the specific IPCC guidelines, um, how key uh, categories are identified and how they change uh, depending on the existing systems, the importance of uh, avoiding double counting and uh, many other topics. Uh, the next steps for Ghana uh, include uh, tasks uh, which were all addressed during the training. So this consists in uh, actions uh, such as uh, improvement of the data management system and engagement with uh, local authorities, uh, improve the quality of the data by uh, categorizing the disposal sites throughout the country uh, improve estimations on waste generation rate uh, and conduct waste characterization exercises to various uh, urban and rural uh, settlements. Uh, improve the activity data related to the share of waste uh, which is sent to disposal site and which is openly burned and other treatment processes such as biological treatment and uh, incineration. Now we are moving to uh, Colombia. So um, in Colombia, the focus of the training was on uh, reviewing the GHG inventory uh, for the waste sector for year 2012, uh, which was part of Colombia's third uh, national communication. Uh, the responsible body uh, in Colombia for the preparation of the national communication, as well as the, their first biennial update report was IDEAM, which is the Colombian Hydrology, Meteorology, Meteorology and uh, Environmental Studies uh, Institute. Uh, the main objective of the uh, one-day training was to um, identify issues for uh, clarification and possible improvements um, in relation to data collection methods and reporting uh, for uh, preparation of the next uh, GHG inventory. So at the end of the training session, uh, an exercise was conducted together with the Ministry uh, of Environment and IDEAM uh, to discuss options for uh, improvement. Um, key parameters such as uh, the degradable organic carbon content, the methane generation rate, uh, fraction of the methane in the landfill gas, uh, methane correction factor, as well as activity data such as the total solid waste uh, generated, the industrial waste generated, the share of waste going to uh, disposal site, uh, methane recovery and waste composition. So where each discussed and actions or options were agreed on how to uh, improve the data for the future. Um, before the Q&A session, we have a last slide with uh, pictures from uh, the two uh, trainings. And on the last slide, we have our um, contact. contact details. Uh, so we encourage you to uh, write uh, to write to us if you have any any questions and now i uh, hand over to uh, the colleagues at giz thank you yeah many thanks uh, reka and brian and flavio that was a very interesting introduction and overview of our training program I can imagine that it gives somehow for the most participants an overview of what we all need to address, so many things to know or to address in order to participate on the process. 
We are now uh, ready to enter the process of question and answers. So um, I see that there are some questions already placed. Well, let me see where to start. <laughs> One question I saw in, in a very general manner, it asked, where can we access materials uh, for such training and how can we uh, involve, can we do such a training without external help? Well, I think this question uh, cannot be answered so easily. If you are interested, it would be good if you contact us. Our training is designed in a way that the stakeholders who uh, participate cannot alone repeat the training, so you need a trained trainers, to put it that way. And in that way, I would ask you, the one who placed the question, if you or your country is interested, to uh, avail of the training, then please contact us and we see if it in any way fits to us. But I cannot answer this question specifically. Another question I saw goes directly to the waste management side. I don't know if you should start with that, but uh, it is an interesting aspect because it relates to the relevance of uh, material recovery. Material recovery for the greenhouse gas uh, pro, uh, aspects for the climate aspects. I think the question was maybe initiated by the pictures I showed from the plastic recovery. And uh, uh, the question asked is, uh, what to do if uh, material recovery does not have the market or if the recyclers who accept materials only accept selected materials? This is a very specific question. For me, it relates to the market development it relates to the system which is available for climate mitigation. Now maybe I can uh, give this uh, question also to our experts, to Reka or Brian, to uh, give us some light to what is the relevance and how do we address, how do we link uh, this to our uh, process of um, climate mitigation in the waste sector and of data gathering. What is the relevance of this question to select material? Uh, I guess I could answer that to an extent. I think it was from Ervin and uh, related to Albania, this uh, question, but I think it's a very topical one right now, given the Chinese uh, national sword and, and uh, their um, not ban but uh, strict limits on plastic imports and, and the effect that's had on the global plastic recycling market. Um, and it's true, um, plastics is a very complicated material um, the different polymers can't be mixed together which makes it very difficult. But I think as part of, of this um, topic of GHG mitigation and, and the inventory, I think um, by monitoring what is going on and and putting in place um, the the systems to record what plastics are being collected and recycled and by whom and what is not and where they are going and um, that will um, influence or, or enable your national policy to be adjusted to um, try and either capture that plastic by other means um, and use it to better uh, effect, whether that's through recycling or energy from waste or, or what's appropriate and affordable for the context in which it is, or that the, there's a national policy to um, reduce the amount of plastics or type of plastics entering the market so that there is uh, a, a market for the end product, the waste resource, um, so that it's not going to waste. But it's a, um, a, it's a very topical question, it's affecting, it's not just GHG, I, I, this is a very topical um, question regarding uh, marine litter, um, the circular economy, extended producer responsibility, and so I think it touches on that and putting in place the mechanisms to identify what plastics are being recovered and what isn't uh, should inform national policy to to have a better holistic strategy in a circular economy. 
Yeah, many thanks, Brian, for clarifying that. Um, I would just, just like to add that there are the two sides which we are looking at. The so one side is that the waste sector officially, according to the IPPC, contributes 3 to 4 percent of uh, uh, global greenhouse gas emissions. But um, it is also known that uh, the waste sector, by recovering resources, by linking, providing secondary raw materials, of course, also lessens greenhouse gas emissions uh, in other sectors, like in the energy sector or uh, through material recovery. This is maybe another field for questions uh, related to data gathering and to bring it in to the NDC process. I don't know if anyone from um, RWA wants to uh, give an additional comment on that or if you proceed with other questions. Is there anything what Reka or Brian you want to add related to the material recovery side? Let's focus on the questions, I guess. I mean, we can, I would have something to add, but better focus on the question. Thank you. We can come back later to that. We have uh, another question which relates more to the training itself. And the question is, if um, we provide, if GSZ provides the training in countries, are the participants expected to spread the knowledge again during the training? and this is being tracked by GSZ. Of course, we will be very happy if our training uh, is be utilized by countries and can be spread it to the trainers. Let's call it, we aim to train trainers. And if they can utilize the knowledge for add-on trainings, this will be the best impact we can imagine. Um, if uh, there are of official relations in our projects, if we work together with partner agencies, of course, we are also involved in the impact monitoring. We check uh, what our projects uh, uh, result in. And then we would, of course, link to the agencies and ask what happens. If countries uh, continue on their own later, then we may not uh, be involved in monitoring or tracking what happens to it. But yeah, as I said, as long as we are involved in official development projects, we will, of course, also be part of the monitoring process. I hope this answers these questions. We have uh, another question addressed to the greenhouse gas inventory process. The question is, does the waste greenhouse gas inventory show greenhouse gas emissions of specific waste categories? And uh, the one who asks is interested, uh, especially to learn more about greenhouse gas emissions of cooling appliances. So who would like to answer these questions? Can I give it back? Uh, like, like? I cut you off, but uh, here, uh, I think we discussed it already, and I will answer in the name of both Flavia and myself. So yes, uh, the GHG inventory is asking for specific waste categories. Uh, there is a specific breakdown of uh, waste composition that is inside the, the L GHG estimation tool, but um, when it comes to showing the resulting emissions, this is uh, shown for as an estimate for the entire waste, for all the waste streams together. So uh, the Excel tool is doing a calculation which is not um, going to show you per stream the emissions. This is in case of uh, this emissions arising from disposal. For cooling appliances, uh, recycling and producing cooling appliances is not part of the waste sector, is accounted for in the industry, in the IPU, industrial processes and process, uh, I think it's called. Um, and when you would want to account for uh, GHG mitigation of reusing cooling appliances or recycling cooling appliances, this would come up in um, mitigation impact because you are replacing uh, virgin materials with secondary materials or you are replacing a potentially newly made uh, cooling appliance with a repaired cooling appliance and then life cycle assessment tools which there are many out there are used 
to measure this mitigation impact. Thank you, Eureka, for this response. Just to go through the next questions, one question just asked um, about um, management of medical waste. This is not tackled in our uh, webinar and in our training. That would be a special uh, topic under special waste management. So you would have to, to ask uh, in another way, uh, as I said, not covered by the project and by the training here. And uh, next question I see here, which is relevant, um, that um, addresses the informal sector, especially the unavailability of waste data related to the activities of the informal sector is a great challenge, as this question points out in many countries, especially developing countries. And the question is, will this point be accommodated in the training? I would say yes, and I know that um, uh, our experts worked on that, but I give the work to, word to Rika or Brian to answer uh, more specifically. Yeah, I think I can answer that one. Um, yes, it's a very relevant question, and uh, we have uh, challenges in every. We we RWA group work in multiple countries, and and right now we have a project in Sierra Leone where we're trying to identify exactly this. But um, what we are are trying to do is develop a, a, a benchmarking uh, of um, data from around the world, and um, to on different recycling uh, systems and strategies, including the informal sector, and trying to get an idea of um, the quantity of waste that they are able uh, to recycle and where that's going, um, in order to inform best estimates across uh, other countries and similar economies. So we do cover that in our uh, training, um, both in waste uh, composition analysis and in uh, data um, uh, development, um, and we will we in the training we look at the specific context of the uh, location in which the training is being delivered. Thank you for this answer, Brian. Another question we have relates to the waste sector. Um, does the training cover greenhouse gas uh, estimations? for different options to utilize sludge from wastewater utilities or digestion for energy generation. Uh, this question uh, relates for the mitigation actions. I would say it will be covered uh, by the training, uh, maybe not in this specific manner of a project development, but it will be covered in general. Am I right? Well, uh, to some extent, th this is already covered in the inventory part. So we do uh, have a part which covers uh, the potential emissions arising from various uh, treatment options and uh, also not treating and not collecting wastewater. And we have to enlarge, uh, but this has to be uh, still better reflected in the mitigation part of the training. Yeah, thank you. When it comes to the specific details, it may be difficult to answer all the questions, uh, which, uh, for example, relate to data sheets for packages or recycling with manufacturers. There's another question here. I would believe this uh, can be addressed and will be addressed in the training in detail and as part of NDC. Maybe in general, I would like to point out a question also for discussion. And that is that on the mitigation side, the benefits um, which result in, in the planning of climate mitigation actions in the waste sector are very often uh, uh, creating benefits in other sectors, as I said, in the energy sector or in industry through secondary raw material use. And this is uh, still something to tackle um, because the greenhouse gas inventory looks uh, at the moment, uh, there are many methods available to checking on uh, the existing waste management systems, but uh, the counting in other sectors may often not be uh, forwarded or given to the uh, municipality who then uh, implements 
in the waste sector uh, climate mitigation measures because it is counted in other sectors. This, I believe, is still a problem to tackle by experts in the future because the motivation uh, to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions should also be linked to the implementers. Uh, maybe I can give this aspect also back to Rekha, Brian, or Flavio. To Brian or Flavio. Uh, yes, I can uh, comment a little bit and throw some numbers on this. So, in general, uh, waste sector is responsible about to about for about three four percent of the country's inventories national inventories so uh, from total um, calculated emissions for a country about three four percent would be uh, waste sector emissions this can go up to ten percent but not much higher than that when you look at uh, mitigation and how that affects upstream and downstream activities. So, for example, uh, the benefits of fuel switch or the benefits of using compost to enhance soil and therefore sequestration of carbon dioxide in the soil, this can come up to 15% uh, according to the estimates of the UN uh, Global um, Waste Management Outlook, which was published a couple of years ago. Uh, however, if, uh, especially in Europe, you start looking at the whole circular economy and the industrial symbiosis and what can be done for prevention, and what can be done for uh, changing consumption patterns, uh, improving the supply chains in both in production and distribution, uh, in some industries this, is, uh, this can come up to 40-50% uh, of the emissions attributed to that industry. So the potential in the circular economy concept is uh, quite large. Yeah, many thanks, Reika, for this addition and clarification. Yeah, I think we are getting closer to the end of our webinar. Um, I do not want to end technical details um, more. If you have questions, please contact us. You may email Katarina Tapo or myself. And um, you may also contact us through uh, the website or to the other things provided here in our uh, presentation, which will be shared by the Information Matters project. I would like to thank all of you uh, to enroll in our webinar. I hope that it was useful for all of you. And um, if you have further requests, as I said, please contact us. I would also like to thank our moderator, Sibylle Tuschla, in the background. Thank you very much for enabling us uh, to make this uh, webinar today. And I'd like to um, especially thank our experts from the Resources and Waste Advisory Group, Reka, Brian, and Flavio. Many thanks for making the effort and enlightening us on the training program, and my colleague, Katarina Tapo. With that, I would say thank you very much, and I wish you a good day.